Okay, we're live now, so no cursing. So, this is Save the River, and we're live out on one of the navigational cells on the St. Lawrence River, and we are visiting uh, one of our common turn nesting sites. And this morning we have Lindsay, one of our interns here, and we have our program manager over here, Patricia Schulenberg, and we have our babies we're visiting. So, um, I'm just gonna kind of give you a little tour and then we'll ask some questions of uh, Patricia and Lindsay. And we also have John, our executive director down here. He's checking to see if any babies have jumped off and need a rescue. Um, so we're not gonna interrupt um, Patricia too much while they're doing the last banding check, but once they have finished that, we can do some questions with Patricia. So what they're doing right now, the nesting site is divided into four quadrants. Um, and there is some um, rebar pipe and there is some lower um, like snow fencing and that's to um, kind of keep the sections divided up and it makes it uh, easier for monitoring. So there's four quadrants and then there's the center section which is where we're checking last today. And um, when we get on the site, um, Patricia and John and Lindsay um, go around the quadrants and um, in a little bit I can show you their clipboards and what type of stuff they're checking down. Um, so what they're doing right now is they're grabbing the babies and they're putting them in uh, the laundry basket, which we call the playpen. And then we're going to check to see if they have a leg band on them. And if they don't, they're going to receive a leg band today. And that's what we're gonna watch them do right now. So there were more babies in the middle than we thought there were. Quite a few. <laughs> there are a couple of fuzzies. Last week in the middle, there was only one guy and he seemed kind of lonely because all the other sections were so full. So Patricia and Lindsay grab a leg band um, off of the tubing here. And Lindsay's getting better. She's, how many weeks have you been coming out and doing this, Lindsay? Um. I think this is the third week I've been actively banding. Okay, so she's yeah. now she's getting down to it where she can do it by herself rather than yes. having to have someone hold the bird with her. And Patricia moves pretty quickly. She's like a one-person banding machine. So I'll show you the fuzzy baby. And she puts a little metal band. Now, Patricia, what's on the metal band? Um, an ID number indicating um, indicating their unique ID. Their unique ID. And so then we will take that information and we will say that, so let's say we started with band number one and we used 50 bands today. What do we do with that information that we know that numbers one for 50 were banded today? We know which um, site that they came from, which nesting site, okay. and that information is useful for researchers when it comes to uh, estimating the productivity of common turn numbers in the mm -hmm. St. Lawrence River and also target uh, habitat restoration projects as well. So we'll know that those numbers came from this navigational cell, that this was their birthplace. So once they receive their band, they just get popped right back down into the same section they came out of and they usually kind of run away and sometimes they're a little startled. They topple over. They make a little bit of a mess in their playpen. And the band doesn't hurt them. It stays with them for life. For life, yeah. For life. So then, how do people observe the band number? Is it researchers going out and looking for birds with bands? Is it birding enthusiasts who are taking pictures and, and reporting band numbers? Both, actually. Um, you can do some, um, uh, researchers can ca recapture, uh, but also taking really good photographs, even if you're a novice birder. Uh, and if there's a band, being able to blow up that picture and look at, um, the numbers is really helpful to researchers. So a combination of both, citizen science and uh, research. Research science. So who is the researcher that we work with on our common turn um, restoration project? Uh, we work with Dr. Lee Harper of River Edge and Associates. Okay, and for folks who have been to our Winter Environmental Conference, you have um, probably heard Dr. Lee Harper speak before. He's spoken um, many times at our conference, including this year, and there's a complete um, video up on our YouTube page of Dr. Harper's um, presentation uh, at this year's conference. I can post that on our Facebook page to kind of give people an overview reminder of what we do with the Common Turn Nesting Program. And this is our last baby band for the day. Ooh. So how old are they, Patricia, when they can receive a band? Uh, 
usually about a week old. Okay. Yeah. And um, a lot can happen in the very few, few first few days of life. Uh, extreme temperatures, hot and cold, storms, uh, predation. So you want to make sure that they're big enough to receive a band and they're going to uh, be able to survive. Yep. So you basically you're not wasting the resource of the band. So um, last week was my first time out to a nesting site and you guys mentioned that um, we let the vegetation grow up more this year. Is that? Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, we've had a lot of extreme temperatures uh, this spring and summer, so the vegetation allows another layer um, in addition to the chick shelter so that they can seek refuge from the heat, uh, avoid predators, um, and that sort of thing. So think about how hot it was if you were on the river in the last week, and then imagine being on top of one of these navigational cells. This gets full sun basically all day. Um, and it's uh, gravel surface is nice for their nesting. Um, so we let the vegetation and the chick shelters that Patricia's referring to are these kind of like little um, lean-tos that are all over the surface here. And um, so chicks can crawl underneath and get out of the sun and kind of cool off under there. Um, and this is the last quadrant. We worked backwards from what we did last week. Um, we ran out of uh, bands actually when we were out here last week, so we weren't able to band all of the chicks we wanted to. Um, so this week we worked backwards, um, we went clockwise versus counterclockwise. Um, so now they're checking the chicks in the first quadrant, so they, it makes it easier rather than chasing them all around. Um, you just plop them all in the playpen and then pick them up, check their legs to see if they have a band on them, um, and if they do, Patricia plops you down, and you run over to the corner and hide. And if they don't, which these little fuzzies, got a couple of little fuzzers over there. When they're little, they have these real cute spots. I'm doing up close. A little baby getting his band, his or her band put on. Yeah, their jewelry. Gonna put their bracelet on for the duration. And so it's just a little crimp tool that they use. Easy as that. So how old might we estimate that is? I know we usually have to check our chart to kind of compare where their spots are well, at and whatnot. Probably a week to ten days old, I believe. <clears throat> they look very soft. Now tell me about um, you're wearing plastic gloves. Why do you guys do that? Uh, to protect myself and the birds. Say if I had sunscreen on or lotion or something, um, we don't want to end up having that onto the yes. chick. The baby. That makes sense to me. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about your clipboards and what you guys are um, recording there? We'll let you go, buddy. And kind of When you're up here, you have to watch your feet. You're always looking for eggs and looking for little babies. <laughs> Lindsay's got a real prize here. <laughs> Sushi for breakfast. Too big for a, for a turn chick. But the turn brought it up. Yeah. So, it. It's too, too big for the little ones to eat. It's a nice little sunny, but a little little too big right. for the babies to uh, get their mouths around here. Should I toss it? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, so our, our chart, we're trying to keep track of the number of three egg nests, two egg nests, one egg nests, um, and uh, uh, young that are too small to band, our total number that we have already banded, uh, and any more active nests as well. And then can you show me, I know you guys have a diagram, but that's interesting on the second page. This is really helpful in the, be <laughs> sorry, <laughs> this is really helpful. This is what happens in the birds poop on your stuff. <laughs> this is really helpful in the beginning. Uh, we had about over 50 nests, so being able to know which nest is which, how many eggs are in it, just to be able to uh, predict when they're going to hatch and when we need to come out here and do some banding. So what, um, when does our monitoring season typically start? When do you come out and start visiting the sites? Um, we start doing um, active restoration in the fall and in the spring, mm -hmm. um, but we'll start monitoring the sites for eggs um, around mid to late May. And I got to participate with that in the spring. What's our first step that you can kind of describe in the spring for some of these sites? Um, in the spring, we'll remove vegetation. We'll make sure that the fencing doesn't have any holes in it. Uh, we will have chick shelters out uh, ready to go. Uh, we will put up um, predator exclusion wiring as so that's well. That's what this is, all of this wiring you guys see in the background here. 
Um, in theory, keeps the predators um, away a little bit more. They're deterred. And uh, geese and other competitors that, uh, for nesting sites. So who competes um, with these common terns? What, what are they up against? Uh, geese, ducks, uh, ringbill gulls, and king rats. Now, how can I tell if I'm on the river, um, and I'm just going to keep looking around at the birds, and it's no offense to you, Patricia, but I like to show the baby birds. Um, who, how can I tell the difference between a common tern and a seagull? And I'll show you up here, guys. When we arrive, um, the adults, the mommies and daddies, obviously get a little perturbed that we're up in their space. So they fly all around you while you're out at this nesting site. How can I tell a tern from a seagull? Well, first of all, the... Um black tips on their wings, the red beak, red feet, uh, and uh, black caps, and forked tail. And They're much smaller than a seagull. I was going to say, the first thing that strikes me also, I love their little black caps. Those are really striking. Um, their beaks are so bright in color, and they're, they're much smaller than those noisy kind of seagulls that are trying to get your chips mm -hmm. when you're eating outside. There is a look-alike tern, the Caspian tern, and that's much bigger. That's about the size of a seagull. And do we also have Caspian terns on the river? Um, we, we have seen them. I believe they nest elsewhere. Okay. Um, how long have we been doing this common turn, um, restoration program with Save the River? Uh, Save the River has been actively monitoring sites with volunteers and, uh, Thousand Islands Land Trust and River Edge Associates since 1999. 1999. So we're up on our 20th anniversary next year. We might need to have a little 20th anniversary party. And we also have another visitor out here today. We have Elaine Tack, who's also videoing doing a little live video and Elaine's working on a really um, lovely, high pro highly productive uh, produced video that will be much nicer than my live video where I'm climbing around and trying not to bother the um, baby turns. We got a little baby back here kind of hiding and we have two listeners today Patricia. We have Barb and Susan and Susan says thank you for your work with the turns. We love to see them in my bay. Um, Just checking your ID tag. Just checking. So how many more weeks will you guys come out to um, check on these nesting sites? Well, this site's actually looking pretty good. I haven't seen too many small ones, so we'll probably come out for another week or two. Okay. We had a couple of eggs. We can go over and visit the teeniest baby that this we have. Site, there might be some other sites that have more chicks. Um, how many sites do we monitor on the river again? I might have already asked that today. I'm way over here. Um, <laughs> well, we monitor six. Monitor six. So this one is the freshest baby that we have at the nesting site today. And um, we used a credit card as like a um, reference. And it's the, basically that's a credit card length right there that you're seeing with the um, fresh baby. And there's still an egg sitting next to it. So maybe, maybe a sibling will come out of there. Um, we have a couple of perchers over there. Oh, great. Well... <laughs> I mean, we can, we can probably leave and see if they jump, jump in. Jump, yeah. All right, guys. So we are all done on our nesting site here today. So we did a video last week also that you can check out on our Facebook page. And we try not to disturb them too much. So once we're done with our work, we leave and we let them enjoy their day. So we are going to sign off at this site.